Hi everyone, welcome back. Thanks to everyone who's been supporting watching the beginning series so far of me breaking down Wallstad method and explaining it. So hopefully beginners are finding it a bit more simple to understand. So in today's video, I want to talk what happens when you use sand as a substrate in the Wallstad method. I'm seeing a lot of this lately, a lot of people using sand and it's quite a modern thing in the Wallstab method, people using sand in their own forums, asking for advice and stuff. So, so I want to touch on it and explain what happens if we use too much sand in a Wallstab tank, because I love sand in my tanks. I, I, I put sand in every single one of my tanks. I absolutely love the visual impact of what sand brings to a tank. But I don't use it in tanks with a soil substrate for a specific reason. Now, the problem is, is if you use too much of a sand cap, with soil underneath you start creating anaerobic conditions so what happens is is you put your soil in and then you cap it with sand and the oxygenated water can't get through the sand to the soil and the soil needs oxygenated needs an oxygenated layer to be able to break down and process the nutrients otherwise we get anaerobic conditions forming so the first thing you'd be looking out for if you use sand in the substrate i'll explain this the scenario sand is a cap on top of soil the first thing you'd notice if anything was going wrong is you get gray and black patches starting to build up in your sand now this is a sign that anaerobic conditions are starting to form underneath the sand and it'll start to creep up the sand and you'll be able to see it it's distinctive gray and then you can start you might start smelling the smell of rotten eggs that's the sulfur releasing from the tank and then eventually what you might find is the top of your tank the top of your sand will start getting like a, a dark green film algae over the top it's not really an algae it's a bacteria forming now a lot of people at this point they'll jump online and they'll start asking questions and it'll wrongly get diagnosed as cyanobacteria but it's not a cyanobacteria so if it's diagnosed as cyanobacteria people start saying to you recommending that you knock your lights down and you dose with antibiotic medications and stuff like that, raising the flow, stuff like that. Th these are the typical ways you treat cyano. With cyanobacteria, there's a distinctive smell. You'll be able to smell it near your tanks. Once you get used to what it smells like, you'll know it straight away. Th there'll be people putting the smell in the comment section. I promise you, people will be telling you what it smells like in the comment section. But because this isn't cyanobacteria, you don't get that smell. And what you'll see is you'll see this film and whatever you do to remedy cyanobacteria, this, this film will just keep coming back. Because what it actually is, it's, it's a type of bacteria that's feeding. It, it needs light and it'll f continually feed off the sulfates, the sulfides being released in the anaerobic condition. This is important because in a healthy wall stab method tank, what you're going to get is you've got your gravel and then underneath it, you've got the soil. Now, it doesn't matter too much if... The bottom part of the soil becomes anaerobic because plant roots have adapted to that. We need what's known as an oxygenated microzone of soil at the top. And these, this oxygenated zone helps the plants. And it also helps if there's anything anaerobic underneath. It helps to oxidize this, break it up and becomes harmless in the tank. But if we don't have that because we capped it with, with sand, then that zone raises right up in the tank. And what you can find is it'll start creeping up your plants it'll start creeping up and up the tank and you, you'll find it, your plants stop doing well they start dying and you plant your filter once the plants die the whole system is in free fall collapse and it's game over and people people have asked me how to remedy this this issue but th the truth is anything any advice anyone's got for you it's just the plaster and the, the broken leg's still there the, that soil's always going to be anaerobic. With that sand on top, it's always going to stay anaerobic and it's always going to keep creating the same scenario. So you're constantly fighting a losing battle. And in my opinion, if it was up to me, I'd break the tank down, I'd start again with soil and a gravel cap. And it just helps solve the situation immediately, completely. So there you go, guys. That's my quick breakdown on... What happens if you use too much sand in a wall start tank? You'll start seeing, number one, you'll see a grey, black, like, patch creeping up into your sand. And then on top of that, you'll see, like, a green, 
cover of like a film of bacteria that will start creeping up your tank and that shows you the anaerobic conditions creeping up your tank and you'll get that rotten egg smell of sulfur coming out your tank and you'll also start seeing your plants dying off and you, you and then your tank's basically in complete breakdown and there's like anything you do to try and suffocate it it's just a temporary patch and the, the problem's always going to persist so thanks for watching this video i'm sorry it's a bit of a negative topic but as part of my beginner series i want to touch on it to help everyone identify this potential issue and next week we'll look at something a bit more exciting we'll look at like my top five plants for a wall stab method tank if you're interested to see how i set a wall stab method tank up check out this video next or if you're interested in how to balance and maintain a wall stab method tank check out this video i'll link them both at the end of the video thanks for watching guys take care see you soon